Yesterday I published this circuit. More or less a principle circuit about very simple uh, Darlington oscillator that can drive a noble gas lamp. I've showed all the flaws in the circuit. So um, I had to do a new schematic, sorry, a new test, and that is this circuit. And this is the optimized circuit. I hope it's visible from this distance. In fact, it's almost the same circuit, but you see uh, a kind of positive plate on the right side. And that is this wiring connected to the lamp. It acts as a capacitive plate. I want to explain that somewhat later. You can see that I have connected uh, the 1K resistor. Here it was connected to the coil. Old schematic, new schematic. It's connected to the positive lead directly from the battery. Doesn't matter much. <coughs> Not a very essential change. But I found that the circuit uh, didn't want to start on low voltages and that's why I have uh, connected here this capacitor, 47 nanofarad. For the, the, the rest the circuit is completely the same. And I want to pay some attention to all the strange phenomena that can happen when you make such a circuit. In the first place this works put out the lights. You see that the lamp glows at 7.3 volts. I go back now to a lower voltage 5.6, 5.1 and it's now quite stable compared to the uh, schematic that I published yesterday. 12 volt is not a good uh, voltage for such a simple circuit. I found that many times and the best range to make these circuits is 5 volts up to 7.2 volts. Uh, I also want to show that all kinds of influences are present in this circuit. It is a circuit that is uh, a completely free running oscillator. So all changes, all external influences here on the circuit or on the components have an effect on the light. I touch for instance now the core from the transformer and I hope it's visible here. You can see that the light gets more bright, somewhat more. It has all to do with the frequency. My body is a kind of mass that I add to this free running oscillator. The frequency goes down due to that mass and there is a better uh, power conversion from the primary to the secondary of the coil. I want to do that again here. Now I touch the core and this also means that when you make such a circuit in a metal box there's no guarantee that this will work. The metal box can give too much shielding and can have the effect that the oscillator doesn't start. Here I can set again the working point with the potentiometer. The working point has everything to do with the frequency and the output. Output to, to the on the secondary, so the high voltage on the secondary. When you see these uh, bands move in the uh, lamp, uh, you are in fact looking at the frequency from the oscillator. They form black and bright and somewhat less bright bands. You can also see that on the scope, frequency changes substantially when I align the potentiometer. So you must align to the, the potentiometer to the optimum uh, light output. And that's approximately here. Uh, I have shown that when I touch the core, the light uh, gets somewhat more bright. And that's also the effect from the capacitive plate here. It's, it is isolated wire 
it circles around here, around the, uh, the spiral from the lamp. Nothing more or less than a piece of isolated wire and it acts as a plate and it gives a somewhat higher uh, light output. And of course on these low voltages, 6.6 volt, every light is welcome. And um, you can also see that the current that the circuit takes does not, uh, is not affected by this capacitive plate. So I want to remove the plate now. And you can see this is uh, without the plate. I hope I can find it in the dark. This is with the plate, capacitive plate connected. And that's the reason why also why you find on uh, cheap camping lanterns sometimes on the noble gas lamp a, a small piece of aluminum glued to the lamp and that has also the same effect. Uh, it affects, uh, it works as a starter. The, the tube can be started better and the capacitive effect also gives somewhat more light. And when the tube, by the way, when the tube is cold, it does not want to start so easily. An issue. I've showed here also the capacitive influences, inductive influences, and the influence from the supply voltage. All they all give a frequency variation and a not proper, not ideal power conversion from the primary coil to the secondary coil. So. This is all that you can expect when you um, make such a simple circuit. Be glad when it works. When it works, don't change it. Don't try to make it very, very neat in a beautiful metal box or so. Because when you take it apart and, and build it again in that neat metal box, there's no guarantee that it will work. One of the reasons also why I publish my circuits on... Um, uh, pieces of wood, varnished and brass nails and when you make it in such a way, when you copy the circuit directly from the schematic and make it in that way and it works, uh, it keeps working. And in such a case it's very well possible that when you uh, put your simple wooden box, uh, wooden uh, plate, your, your electronic circuit on a wooden plate, in a neat metal box it still works and that regards all kinds of circuits radios oscillators etc so this is an optimized circuit I want to show still um, the effects from the voltage I think that's very important when I go to 12 volt for instance now I'm on 11.4. You can see that the light is not not uh, not stronger. It's not brighter compared to the situation on 6 volts. So the only thing that I do now is pump in energy into that coil, heat up the core, and the power conversion is not good. So back to a better voltage, where I have the same amount of light and a very low supply current, 200 milliampere or so. So 200 uh, milliampere at 6 volt is 1.2 watts or so. That's what the circuit consumes now. And it still has a quite good amount of light. Perhaps white LEDs work better, have a much better uh, uh, power, um, bright, more brightness compared to this noble gas lamp. But it's all experimental, electronics is fun, and um, that's why I, why I do this hobby. Wish you luck.